Wow. So the monsters had a damn field day this episode. I mean, they really got out and sowed their royal oats. And it's all thanks to Kevin and his new monster boo thing. So yeah, we gotta thank the new power couple for shaking things up, although the romance was short-lived, unfortunately. Plus, it sucks to say, but we lost a few people too. But we'll get into all of that soon enough. Right now, let's get into the recap for episode seven, All Good Things. So the episode starts off at Colony House with Fatima and Julie as they discuss Fatima's big day the day she got stuck in the town. And Julie tells Fatima that it's a weird thing to celebrate. And for once, I actually agree with Julie. Shit, I don't think I'd be celebrating anything actually until I got out of there, but that's just me. But Fatima responds to Julie by telling her that it's more of a celebration of survival, just to remind people that it's possible. Then Fatima pulls out her favorite cardigan to wear to the party because throughout the year, she normally just hides it from Trudy because we all know how Trudy gets down when it comes to stealing other people's clothes. Then Ellis shows up a little tipsy inviting the girls to join him, but they decline. So he takes off to find Victor instead, which is pretty funny. Then Fatima reveals to Julie that Ellis is getting drunk because days like these reminds him of the people who didn't make it. Then we jump to the kitchen where Ellis is trying to get Victor wasted while he searches for peaches in the cupboard. Because if you didn't know by now, Victor loves peaches the same way Kel loves orange soda. And hell, he might even love peaches even more than that, but I don't know. But Victor tells Ellis to politely leave him the hell alone, and then Donna shows up. And Victor is like, hey, Donna, where's my peaches? And Donna reveals to him that they are finally out of the canned peaches. And Victor isn't too happy to hear this shit at all from Donna. Now, we all know that Victor isn't quite right, but he's also not a damn fool. If anything, he's arguably the smartest character in the show. So I don't know why in the hell he was acting like those canned peaches were supposed to last forever. I mean, when Donna told him that they were out of peaches, he looked like he had just about enough of her ass. And, <laughs> and that was pretty funny. In the next scene, we see Kevin leaving a bouquet of flowers outside for you know who, and of course we'll come back to this a bit later. Then we cut to town where we see Boyd ringing the bell as usual because it's getting dark. Then over at the Matthews, we see Tabitha putting Ethan to bed, and over at Kenny's house, we see Jade still drawing that damn symbol that we still don't quite understand just yet. Then we jump back outside where we see Father Cotri waiting to talk to Boyd about Sarah at the police station. As they walk inside, Father Cotri notices Boyd's camping gear on the table, and he basically tells Boyd that they obviously have a lot more to talk about. Meanwhile, we jump back to the Matthews where we see Jim drawing up the blueprints for a radio tower. He tells Tabitha that he's planning to ask Donna if he can build it on the top of Colony House to get a better signal, and Tabitha supports the idea. Then she tells Jim that she's just worried about Ethan and Julie, but Jim assures her that they're going to be okay because unlike the Pratt family, the Matthews have actually nailed the windows shut, and he tells her that Donna over at Colony House will look after Julie because she's smart. Speaking of Colony House, we cut back to see that every Everyone is now celebrating Fatima's one year anniversary and that they got her a dream catcher as a gift. And we also find out that everyone loves Fatima so much because she's the number one supplier for weed at the colony house. After Fatima receives her gift, she starts tonguing down this random girl, Stacy, who approaches her. And this situation actually shocks the hell out of Julie. And she walks away because she's jealous and she has a little crush on Fatima. During this scene, we see Kevin sneaking around in the background, but we already know what he's been up to. Then back at the police station, Boyd tells Father Cotri about his plan to head off into the woods and try to find a way out. Afterwards, Father Cotri shows Boyd the items in his bag and proceeds to tell him about his life before he arrived in the town. He tells Boyd that in his congregation, there was a young boy who was suffering from domestic abuse. And instead of actually helping the kid, he just gave him a damn chocolate bar and <laughs> sent him on his way. He said later that day, he actually stopped by the kid's house just to check on him, just to find out that the father had beaten him within an inch of his life. He said the kid was lying on the floor with his neck bulging, and the father was like, uh, he'll be all right. So Father Cotri beat the shit out of the guy, which was well-deserved, might I add. And I guess he just took the chocolate bar from the kid because he said he saw it in the kid's pocket when he was lying on the floor, which was kind of strange. But he says he later ended up at a bridge where he was drinking, and he said God spoke to him and told him to get back in the car and keep driving. And of course, by this time, he had arrived in town. After Father Cotri's backstory, he reveals to Boyd that he has Sarah tied up in the basement of the church. Then Boyd Boyd was ready to light Father Cotri's ass up because he was so stern before about putting Frank in the box. And now this makes him look like a hypocrite. But he explains to Boyd that Sarah might be the key to getting out of this place. And after hearing that, Boyd was willing to listen. Meanwhile, we cut back to Kevin over at Colony House while his monster boo thing, Jasmine, tries to persuade him to let her inside. Kevin finally gives in and grabs the biggest crowbar that he could find. So yeah, 
Kevin is a loner and apparently he has no friends at Colony House. So of course when a pretty young monster boo thing like Jasmine pulls up, Kevin is ready to pounce and he is obviously not thinking clearly. Downstairs during the party, Ellis overhears some random guy talking about dimensions and how the town is a pocket dimension. And he is absolutely right, but Ellis is not trying to hear this shit tonight. So he tells the guy to shut up and things escalate to the point where Fatima shows up and tries to prevent a fight. And as Ellis and Fatima begin to walk away, random guy says get him out of here before he shoots up the place. Now this response really triggers Ellis, but before he decides to go over and bash the guy's face in, he tells Fatima that he's just going to go upstairs and lay down. After Ellis walks away, the random guy says like mother like son, and then Donna Chin checks his ass. Now there is some strong foreshadowing in this scene. First the random guy says get him out of here before he shoots up the place, then later he says like mother like son. So yeah, I'm not going to discuss this anymore because I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but you guys are free to talk about it down in the comments below, because we're actually getting some hints here about Ellis's mother, which is Boyd's wife, Abby. Then we jump back upstairs where we see things are really heating up with the lovebirds, Kevin and his monster boo Jasmine. As Kevin begins to finally get himself a little action with monster boo, things seem to be going well until she bites out his damn tongue, and Kevin really begins to reflect on his life decisions. Because this one was definitely the dumbest one, Kevin. Back downstairs, we see Fatima approaching Trudy who also seems to be a loner at the party as well, just not a dumbass like Kevin. She notices that Trudy seems a bit sad and Trudy tells her how she'll never get a party because no one likes her. So Fatima decides to cheer Trudy up by letting her wear her favorite cardigan. And then Trudy runs off all happy with Fatima's sweater. Then Julie approaches Fatima and asks her about the girl she was kissing earlier. Then Fatima tells Julie that her and Stacy were just messing around and that her and Ellis are actually serious. And then Julie decides since, you know, Fatima's just out here handing out love, then maybe she can get her some too by asking Fatima for a kiss. And now Fatima is surprised as hell and Julie takes off running from this awkward moment like Anna Ferris from Scary Movie. Back at the police station, Father Cotri tries to further convince Boyd that Sarah is valuable and that all three of them should actually go into the woods together. Then back at the Matthews, we see Tabitha continuing to dig to China to find out where the wires lead. It also looks like her and Jim are doing a little bonding as well, you know, trying to rekindle that marriage. And then back at Colin house, Monster Boo Jasmine is done ripping Kevin's heart out, and probably his ass too, and decides to throw up the window for the rest of her friends. Now there's a couple things I want to talk about in this scene related to the monsters because we are definitely seeing some new behavior here, which is number one, we see her cleaning up to maintain her disguise. You know, I didn't really think they would care about something like that, so that shows they want to continue to move strategically. And number two, she seems to look a bit regretful about what she did, which is a bit strange because they are monsters. I mean, maybe I misread that emotion, but she seems like she looks a bit regretful. And number three, apparently the monsters don't have to be someone you already know to form a bond with you. We see an example of this with Kevin and Jasmine, but earlier on in the show, we only see people really being persuaded by people they knew. Like for example, Megan and her grandmother or Julie and the boy that she knew when they first got to the colony house. And also another thing I actually want to point out about this scene is that I really love that creepy camera pan that they do after Jasmine puts up the window, showing all the monsters approaching from the woods was actually pretty damn cool, especially that creepy ass milkman. Then surprisingly enough, we cut to Julie paying Victor a visit. <laughs> Who would have thought? Because she claims that she had nowhere else in Colony House to go to. And a lot of you guys actually called this down in the comments a couple weeks back. You said that Julie would be running back to Victor or Victor would eventually end up saving her. So there you go. After Victor lets her in, she begins to bombard him with questions like why did he dig the graves? And what is it that's so special about two cars arriving in the town at the same time? And why is he packing like he's going somewhere? Basically, all the same shit that we the audience also want answers to. During this time at Kenny's house, we see that Jade stumbles across a picture in the notebook that he got from storage that has a picture of young Victor in the background, and I'm like 90% sure that that's the same notebook that he got from storage. And we're not really sure what this means yet because it's not really a surprise that Victor is in an old picture because we already know that he's been there for a really long time, but it is interesting because I think once Victor and Jade actually link up, these two can really come up with something as well as far as getting out of the town. Then we jump back to Colony House, just before all hell breaks loose, where we see Trudy is on her way to give Fatima her favorite pillow. But unfortunately, poor Trudy doesn't make it because she gets lured into a room by the monsters. Now in this scene, I would say Trudy probably deserves to die because if all 
it takes for her to be lured into a room is her curiosity as to why someone is laughing at a party. I mean, there is so much commotion around her. I mean, it's a party. So why is this the one thing that captures her attention? Now, of course, saying she deserves to die is a bit harsh, but the most I would have done personally was just peek through the damn door just to see what she was laughing at. I mean, I don't know if I would have walked in the room and approached her and actually asked her what she was laughing at, but I mean, whatever, at least no one has to worry about Trudy taking their shit anymore. Then we cut back to the random guy where we see blood dripping down on him from the second floor of the house where we see one of the monsters staring down smiling at him and i gotta say this is actually another pretty dope creepy camera shot here i mean there seems to be a lot of those in this episode but at this point everyone in colony house begins to scream in terror and run for their lives we see victor and julie escaping through the window and we see donna driving a van full of people trying to get them safely to town once outside victor tells julie that they need to head to the woods after he sees the kid in white of course julie is frightened because she knows that these things live in the woods but victor assures her that if she wants to see her family again they need to go to the woods back inside colony house we see ellis on his way downstairs he then walks into the room where trudy was murdered because she was still currently wearing fatima's sweater so he thought it was her while in the room one of the monsters began to approach him but the guy's a quick thinker so he decides to jump out the damn window and then he proceeds to jump off the roof survival of the fittest right here Fatima then runs over to Ellis as they are being cornered outside and she says that she has an idea. Her and Ellis run back inside of Colony House and they close off a section of the house using a talisman. Then Ellis asked Fatima how did she know that would work and then she says to him that she didn't. She just thought it might work because of what Boyd did in the RV. Then we jump to the woods with Victor and Julie and we see Victor telling Julie to get inside one of the faraway trees and she'll be safe. He also tells her to tell Ethan that it's starting and that Ethan would know what he means by that. Then as he he pushes Julie inside the tree, he yells that he'll be right behind her. And then we see Julie coming out on the other side, which happens to be the bunker, which basically explains how Victor probably ended up there in the flashbacks earlier. It's kind of like some Pac-Man shit where you can go in one side and come out the other to avoid the ghost. I mean, that's actually happening here in the show. That's pretty dope. Then back in town at the police station, we see that Boyd and Father Cotri have come to an agreement to travel into the woods with Sarah. During this time, Donna pulls up in the van blowing the horn, and Boyd Boyd and Father Katri rush outside to help get everyone inside safely. Now everyone else rushes back inside including Boyd, but for some reason Father Katri thought it would be a good idea to take his sweet time and not to really rush back inside. So we hear one of the monsters call Father and proceeds to slap the damn skin off his face. Then the episode ends with Harold Perrineau aka Boyd giving a great performance and us losing Father Katri. You know I actually liked Father Katri. I thought he had one of the stronger performances throughout the show. So anyway here we are. I know you guys have been waiting for things to pick back up in the show again, so let me know down below if you guys were pleased with this episode, because I most certainly was. So we know now that Jim actually has a blueprint for the radio tower, and Tabitha is obsessed with digging, and I wonder if she'll actually find anything. Also, Victor obviously has a plan to do something, but we don't know what yet. But I do know that earlier on, we see a drawing on Victor's walls that confirm that he does know where some trees will teleport you to, but not all of them, which is quite interesting. And what do you guys think the random guy meant when he made those comments about Ellis being an animal like his mom was. And of course, if you guys can think of anything else that we might need to discuss from this episode, be sure to list it down below. But there you guys have it. And if you enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Thank you for watching.